restoring appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is the story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Prime Time News. I am Geft Ogete. In our major story, Nigerian medical doctors tell federal government to withdraw sack latest and reverse suspension of residency training programs. Also in this program, World Health Organization says the world underestimates the Ebola crisis. Oshun PDP insists on going to tribunal to challenge the result of the August 9 governorship election. Outside Nigeria, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi describes cases of incessant rapes in the country as a shame. Good to have you stay tuned. Now details of the headlines and other stories. The Nigerian Medical Association wants the health authorities to reverse the decision to suspend residency training programs for striking doctors. It also demands unconditional reinstatement of resident doctors that have been handed sack latest. This was the outcome of an emergency meeting of NMA's national offices in Abuja. The report. This is the sack led that forced the enemy to have an interface with the media on the ongoing doctor strike. And expectedly, its leaders are not impressed by a decision they say is targeted at breaking their ranks. Rising from an emergency meeting, NMA is demanding an immediate withdrawal of the suspension circular. Consequently, it is hereby resolved as follows. One, Nigerian Medical Association condemns in totality the alleged presidential directive via the Federal Ministry of Health suspending residency training program in Nigeria. Nigeria Medical Association demands immediate withdrawal of the suspension circular and unconditional restatement of the so-called SAG resident doctors. Government should show commitment on her part in resolving the current impasse with the Nigeria Medical Association by all means any attempt by government to break her ranks as association will be resisted. Rather than abolishing residency training program, government should show more commitment towards improving the already poor funded program. NMA insists that the decision to abolish residency training program is illegal. It also sent out a clear message to resident doctors. In the light of the above, therefore, the Nigerian Medical Association hereby directs that no doctor should accept or collect any sack letter or sign any register opened by the government or her agents in the hospitals. For the avoidance of doubt, no medical doctor, no matter how hungry, should pick up any locum appointment with the government hospitals as directed by the circular. Any doctor who flouts this directive does so 
at his of our own peril. The government had argued that the doctor's strike was not justifiable since it had met 90% of their demands. But the doctors have a different position. And on the 24 point demand, government said yes, yes, yes. That does not mean implementation. And what has been said by the Honorable Minister that 90% have been met, it is absolutely false. When we expect that an agreement has been implemented, is when the end result has been achieved. The striking doctors say they have no intention to return to work until all their demands are met. They say government's decision to suspend residency training would only make a bad situation worse. Resident doctors are also kicking against the government's decision to suspend residency training program at federal hospitals. Armed with placards, they staged a peaceful protest at the Secretariat of the Nigerian Medical Association in Abuja. The resident doctors say they are, not, they are now out of job for demanding improved health care services in Nigeria. The World Health I'm not asking for suspension of sponsorship. They are saying they've sacked us. I don't have a job now. The letter says they are suspending the program, and there's an accompanying letter, a prototype that says they should issue to every resident, terminating his appointment. I'm a senior civil servant. You cannot sack me just like that, out of the blues, just waking up from your bed, you say I'm sacked. There has to be procedure. So if in terms of legality, they have committed a big flaw, but this is Nigeria, anything goes. What we are saying, is this is what has been done as a tool for bargaining. We perceive that as a mistake in the principle of negotiation. It will only escalate the problem. Ebola, we are concerned. Let the federal government and the state government try enemy at the federal and state, at national and state levels to see whether we participate. If we don't participate, then we are not willing to help Nigerians. I think Ebola should be an issue that should not be used in this context at all. We have responded when the bomb blast happened in Kano, Kaduna, Yoba. We've shown them that we can go to work and do everything. The World Health Organization says the scale of the Ebola outbreak appears to be vastly underestimated. The death toll from the disease reached 1,069. The body says its staff has had seen evidence that the numbers of Reported cases and deaths do not reflect the scale of the crisis. It ordered in a statement that extraordinary measures were needed. The outbreak began in Guinea in February and has since spread to Liberia, Sri Leone and Nigeria. However, the WHO remarks that the risk of transmission of Ebola during air travel remained low as the disease is not airborne. As a consequence, Kenya Airways has rejected pressure to suspend its flights to the Ebola heat states of West Africa. The outbreak, according to the World Health Organization, was expected to continue for some time. WHO is coordinating a massive scaling up of the international response. Nigeria has threatened to sanction any international media that attempts to run down the country over Ebola. Information Minister Labran Marku issued a threat while drawing attention to unfair reports in foreign media on the Ebola situation in Nigeria. Marku stated that contrary to the report, there is no Ebola case in Abuja. There are two newspapers that I've seen, I haven't seen the report in other papers, who also report a very unfair story about Nigeria. The claim was that there were some four Indian doctors uh, who were forced in Abuja you know, to treat uh, Ebola cases. One, the names of the doctors were not announced. No, none of the newspapers carried the name of the doctors. None of them carried the name of the hospital where those doctors were allegedly forced to treat Ebola cases. None of those uh, newspaper houses collaborated their story with the uh, Minister of Health, the Nigerian health officials, or the Minister of Information 
but this story was outlandishly published. But it is not now in, in this country and everywhere. There has not been any single Ebola case in Abuja. Lagos State Government has debunked reports in some quarters that victims of Ebola virus are not properly taken care of by government. Governor Babatande Fashala stated this position while reacting to statements credited to the families and friends of the victims who claimed that affected people in the isolation emergency center of the state government are being subjected to inhumane treatment. Fashala also solicits for more volunteer health workers to assist in the fight against the spread of the deadly Ebola virus. While we sympathize with, with, with the families and the victims, the health workers are doing the best they can. My appeal is for more health workers to sign up. And let me share with you also what I was told in my uh, meeting this morning, that even if you were the best physician in the world today, if you came there today, you can't enter into that isolation world because you need to be trained in how to kit up and how to get out of the kit so that you don't infect yourself. You need also to be trained in the flow of activity inside that isolation unit. If you come in from a particular place, you can't go out from there. And you need to end up in a place where you can be, you can be washed down and taken out. So, and that training takes anything from five days to seven days to achieve. So even if we had all the full uh, complement of doctors signing on today, it is risky to put them inside that place without first training them. Former Borno State Governor Ali Modu Sharif on Friday held a closed-door meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan. He later explained to State House correspondent that he was on a private visit. The former governor, however, admitted that he is on the verge of joining the People's Democratic Party and also spoke briefly on the security situation in northeastern Nigeria. Yes, there's this matter that I might join the PDP and we'll but that was not the discussions that brought me to the president. Now. That, that brings his question relevant. Yes. Why name APC for PDP and what are you bringing into it? People like us, who the nation have done everything that as an individual you want your nation to do for you by the grace of God and the people of Nigeria have been, put me into that position. At every time, my interest should be how to move the nation forward. Need every one of us, every Nigerian, to put his head together to see what we can do to help this nation. Whatever that as a civilian will do will only contribute my being a chief executive of the state for eight years. What I have seen through my tenure, I will contribute to the security agencies through whom I got those information. And you, what you have to understand, the country is a big country. And Bono State is a different state from any other state in the nation. Presidential spokesman Ruben Abati has disowned a statement credited to him on the whereabouts of the abducted Chibok girls. A release purportedly issued while the presidential spokesman had indicated that President Gulag Jonathan has revealed the location of the abducted girls. He was also said to have exposed the masterminds of Boko Haram. Abati, however, denied issuing the release and blamed it on hackers who he says were bent on misleading the public at the expense of the credibility of the Jonathan administration. You're watching Core TV News. PDP and Omishwe vows to challenge the August 9 governorship election in court. We'll bring you details after the break. Stay with us. Nivea Nourishing Body Lotion. Its effective formula with Hydra IQ gives your skin deep and long-lasting nourishment for skin that stays moisturized all day long. Look great, feel great with deeply nourished skin. 
Nourishing Body Lotion from Nivea. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Live a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24 hour news station. Welcome back. It's Call TV Primetime News. The People's Democratic Party in Oshun State says it will go to court over the conduct of the just concluded governorship election, citing cases of irregularities. Franco Malape has more. The usual activities are the PDP state secretary seems to have slowed down after the outcome of the governorship election. Just a few were seen moving around. The party's publicity secretary in Oshun, Bola Jiao, says it is not yet over for the party as it has resolved to go to court over the outcome of the August 9 election. Sean, the party here, the stakeholders, the executive, the, who's, the who is who, of all, including a candidate, the all resolved to go to the court. And this is where we are heading to. And we are doing all that is needful to ensure that uh, we prove our case and we emerge victorious and the stolen mandate is returned back to the lawful owners. The APC spokesperson, Kunle Oyatomi, defended the outcome of the election as a renewed mandate for the incumbent governor. The court, the appeal court in Ibadan, restored justice to Governor Ralph Aregwe Shola for his mandate that was stolen three and a half years earlier. So that's the thing about it. But he has proven today that that mandate has been also uh, re 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 renewed through the popular wish of the people. Although the national body of the PDP and the president has congratulated Governor Raoul Farag Bashola, the winner of the election, the party at the state level says there has reasons to head for the court over the election. We have had cause to complain about certain irregularities, particularly it has to do, as it has to do with uh, the uh, employment and engagement of uh, ad hoc staff, the senior officer and the likes. That we wrote a petition to INEC, and uh, we have not uh, up to now uh, seen any, any, any reaction. Analysts have described PDP's loss in the Oshun election as a big setback for the party at the state level. But a PDP stalwart in Oshun, Balajiao, says the outcome has not affected the party structure in any way. You will agree with me that they say he who wears the shoes nowhere pinches as much as we the 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 branch of the party here in the state have seen unassailable incontrovertible evidence here and there the new development in the ocean politics might just be an interesting trend to political observers who are watching with keen interest frank omalape court tv news Oshubu. Education Minister Ibrahim Shekarao has assured Nigerians that the education sector will be better under his watch. Shekarao made this assurance when he received the leadership of the All Nigeria Conference of Principals of Secondary Schools in Abuja. The minister affirmed that although there are challenges in the sector, he is committed to making a difference. By some more completes the story. He has only been Education Minister for a few months, but within a few weeks of his appointment, 
Two unions, which have been on strike for several months, called off their industrial action. There are, however, more pressing issues at hand. The recently released results of the May June West African School Certificate Examination showed over 70% failure in maths and English. This is part of the concerns of secondary school principals when they visited the Minister of Education. We would like him, as Minister of Education of the Republic of Nigeria, to make a difference by considering the following. What? The need to restore higher school certificates of sixth form as part of our education system. The group commended the minister for intervening in the Polytechnic and Colleges of Education teacher strike. They now want him to check the spate of incessant and prolonged strike in the nation's higher institutions. Please arrest incessant and prolonged strikes in our institutions. The magic wand you use on your very first of work as minister in making us up call of his almost one student, one academic year of strike. Is the minister on his part acknowledged the challenges that have characterized the education sector before he assumed office, but promised not to relent in his efforts to reposition the sector. Even the unions, this was what I put forward to them. Let's sit, even if it means heating ourselves, even if it means slapping ourselves, kicking our heads, but whatever disagreement we have, we must make sure lessons continue. No matter what reason, no matter the strengths of our argument for and against, whether union, whether uh, government, we must not lose sight of the fact that the purpose of our being where we are is to ensure that teaching and learning takes place. The minister has promised to bring change to the education sector, but for now, Citizens can only hope that the days of prolonged strike will soon be a thing of the past. Pio Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission have arrested a former branch manager of one of the new generation banks over an 81 million Naira credit fraud. The commission says Victor Amuche allegedly packaged loan facilities for himself using several names and accounts of some customers of his bank with whom he shared the proceeds. It added that the loan went bad and the bank had to hold Amuchi, who was on the verge of running out of the country before being apprehended by EFCC operatives. The commission ordered that the suspect would be arraigned as soon as investigations as concluded. The police authorities have begun distributing share certificates of the police mortgage bank to officers and men of the force. Acting Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba personally handed over certificates to some of the policemen at a brief ceremony in Abuja. At least 11,000 naira was deducted monthly from the salaries of the benefiting police officers. Pal Sambo has details. The Board of Directors of Nigeria Police Mortgage Bank was inaugurated by the former Inspector General, Muhammad Abubakar, to facilitate access to funds by police officers. Out of the 5.5 billion Naira authorized share capital, 3.95 billion Naira shares have been fully subscribed to. Now, these beneficiaries, both serving and retired officers, have a certificate that guarantees them access to loans and other business transactions. Inspector General Suleiman Abba assured officers and men of the police of more benefits from the bank. The dream of every police officer, whether serving or retired, in assessing loan, housing loan, will be easy, will be made much, much easy. It will also enable the officers who contribute, who invest in that mortgage bank, get share certificates, which we have just witnessed this morning. And this is just symbolic. Anyway, everybody who invested will take benefit from these share certificates. Recently, 
Some police officers in Lagos complained of deduction from their salaries and same was not credited to their pension account. But the police high command says there is no cause for concern. The system in handling deductions in police cooperatives has been on for many years. If anybody is complaining or is having problems with crediting his account with deductions, I think something is really, really wrong. Um, the commissioner will confirm if that exists anyway. But let me tell you that even if it exists, it may not be unconnected with the fact that we have, at least since I came in as chairman, been struggling to computerize the activities of the cooperatives. As the police gradually moves to attaining financial autonomy, the police authorities are also assuring Nigerians of better policing across the country. Pius Samuel, Court TV News, Abuja. Fire gutted the popular Tejoshu market in the Yaba area of Lagos seven years ago and left many traders and business entrepreneurs stranded as well as agonized. The pain and losses suffered at that time and the period after have finally paved way for a big relief to the traders as the state governor of Abat and they partially commissioned the new ultra modern Tejoshu market. Ulaj Moko Latunji has more. As work on the new Tejusho market reaches final stage, the first phase of the ultra-modern Tejusho market is now ready for business, with over 4,000 shop spaces including lock-up and key clamp shops offering investments and commercial opportunities for businesses. We have purpose designed in this new market key clamps and we have provided 1,251 instead of 533 that was in the old market. Of course, you now have banking spaces, you have 14 food court spaces, you have 8 lifts to enable goods and services to move up and people, you have 2 escalators to enable people to go up and down the four flights without climbing very steep steps, you have 2 ramps designed to assist physically challenged people to get into and out of the building, and you have a crash where nursing mothers can attend and keep their children while they are training. Of course, we have also learned from the incident that caused the disaster. So there is a dedicated fire service station here to ensure, and there are fire fighting systems that have also been built into the market. While the old market was designed for a limited number of shops, as I said, unauthorized extensions were created in the area reserved for parking and other services. Now, you will now have a dedicated car park for about 800 vehicles. And so, my first goal is that there will be no illegal spaces and concessions created in this market again. The Commissioner for Physical and Urban Development, Olutonya Inde, says it is the desire of Lagos State's government to meet the expectation of businessmen and women so as to redefine trade and investments in the state. The new Tenyosho shopping complex is a proof of the determination of Lagos State to stand out and not do things the way they have always been done in our nation. We have all around us the evidence of what happens to our public buildings when they are involved in these acts, such as in panel, like the one that affected the old Tegosho market. The NITEL and Defense Headquarters buildings are still fresh in our memory. So, in the midst of these examples, where others have failed, the Lagos State government chose to make a difference by departing from what used to be the habit and restoring the confidence of the week and delivering a brand new complex. The project manager of Bafemi Onoshide says unfortunate fire incidents which burns down the old traditional market necessitated the innovation for a bigger, more sophisticated complex. The projects, this type of show market levels, all started when the previous old market structure got burned down in December 18, 2007 and causing so much casualty and losses. The Ibato structure had so much challenges and in fact trading in it was a nightmare. In our remarks, the Yolaji General urged traders to maintain the market to toll stability.
The new market complex rising from the arches of the old traditional Tejucho market is strategically located along the Jolek Maitira Road in Yaba with fascinating views of Suruleri. The construction of the massive edifice has been on since 2008. Olaju Mokeo Latunji, Core TV News, Lagos. Watching Core TV News, we take another break and return shortly with business and sports. Stay with us. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. TV News, expanding your view. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak. And I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. And thanks for joining us tonight on Business News. My name is Bimbo Fagade. With the fear and panic created by the reported Ebola incident in Nigeria barely a month ago, the nation's hospitality industry, especially in Lagos, may be losing money as a small-scale cancellation of hotel bookings and airline reservations have been witnessed. It is fair that if the cancellation of hotel and airline bookings continues, it could significantly affect the business projections of operators in the sector. The cancellations has affected mostly the international hotel brands whose target guests are foreigners on business trips, diplomats on visits and other expatriates. The investigation also indicates that the would-be guests are cancelling their trips based on travel and health alerts advising against trips to West African countries. Hotels are now sensitizing their staff on the virus preventive measures and best care for guests and security consciousness. They also provide hand sanitizers at strategic places in the hotel, aprons, hand gloves, temperature gauges to dictate guests with symptoms of virus screening machines, among others. Additional to the safety measures is inquiry on guest travel history within a year and the means of transport to Nigeria. Through growth and employment gen projects, the federal government, in collaboration with the World Bank and the UK Department for International Development, DFID, aims to increase entertainment output by $150 million annually while creating 50,000 direct jobs and between 50,000 and 150,000 indirect jobs by September 2018. In this project, the DFID is providing £90 million as grants while the World Bank is giving $160 million as concessionary loan. Those who wish to benefit from the scheme will only have to form clusters and identify with the GEM theme at the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. The projects will invest in more efficient, secure and formalized distribution models, improve finance access, equipment and skills and facilitate new business partnerships. It will also increase incentives to invest in better, bigger production while creating new jobs and income opportunities. Workshops are being held in different locations of the country 
according to what they are known for. The federal government says the Corporate Affairs Commission will, as from October 1st this year, begin the electronic registration for companies willing to set up businesses in Nigeria. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Olushe Gwaganga, disclosed this while addressing journalists during the quarterly meeting of the ministry and its status in Abuja. Aganga says online registration will help to reduce the cost of doing business significantly, as well as the time it takes for local and foreign investors to set up their outfits in the country. He also said the Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan was being implemented effectively, adding that five new policies will soon be unveiled for the still, textile and garments, palm oil and vegetable oil, cocoa processing and petrochemical sector. The minister said the federal government has commenced a pilot program to help farmers borrow up to 75% of the value of their commodities in the custody of their budget securities and commodity exchange. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says it is the collaborative effort of stakeholders, including banks, e-payment service providers, among others, to help fight and reduce to the barest minimum activities of electronic fraudsters in the country. Meanwhile, Godwin Emefile, CBN governor, as part of the key initiative of the bank, will today launch the outbound money transfer services in partnership with the Western Union Money Transfer. According to the Apex Bank, the outbound service, which is first of its kind in Nigeria, will provide Nigerians the opportunity of transferring funds up to 2,000 US dollars to the relatives and dependents abroad. And with these new arrangements, Nigerians will only pay the Naira equivalent to the money transfer service operators for foreign currency disbursement to recipients abroad. The CBN Director of Banking and Payment System Department, Dick Fatoko, said this are the Nigerian electronic fund firm organized by the CBN in Lagos. He noted that Nigeria as a country has done a lot in terms of electronic payment, where there is noticeable large increase in number of transactions going on through electronic channels. Interbank lending rates climbed to an average of 12% on Friday from 10.3% last week following withdrawal of cash from banking system by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, during the week. The state-owned energy firm withdrew a portion of its deposit with some lender suites account from the central bank after it sold about $400 million to some banks this week, draining liquidity from the system and raising on the cost of borrowing among banks. NMPC, which accounts for all the bulk of dollars traded on the interbank market, sold the Green Bank to some lenders this week and withdrew the proceeds to its account with the central bank. The open buyback climbed to 11.75% from 10.25% last week, 25 basis points below the central bank's benchmark interest rate of 12%. Nigeria, which raised 100 billion naira in bonds this week, plans to raise another 70.46 billion naira worth in treasury bill of three months and six months maturity at an auction next Wednesday. And on market reports, equity transaction on the Nigerian stock exchange floor ended on negative note. The NSU share depreciated by 370.33 points to close lower at 41,380.05 basis point. Market capitalization, however, dropped to close, to close at 13.64 trillion naira. In all, a total of 482 million shares valued at 2.64 billion naira were exchanged in 4,368 deals. Report shows that total PLC topped the gainers chart, followed by CCNN PLC, Ashaka Cement PLC, Nigeria Bureau's PLC, and Berger PLC. On the other hand, Dangote Cement PLC led the losers chart, followed by MRS OA PLC, Connell PLC, Wapco PLC, and PZ PLC. Meanwhile, here are the top five trades.
And that's it on Business News tonight. Thanks for staying tuned. Tolu Ojewumi is on the standby to give you updates on sports. Now the ever exciting world of sports, Lesotho have stayed away from tomorrow's final 2015 African Youth Championship against Nigeria after they expressed fears over the outbreak of Ebola virus disease in the country. Lesotho Football Federation official uh, Limto Mokethe said uh, they have contracted the uh, Confederation of African Football CAF and Nigeria Football Federation NFF that they will not honor the match. The Senegalese officials appointed for the game have already arrived Kaduna where the match will be played. CAF are now to decide on the overall winners of the final qualifier. In the meantime, five players have dropped off Nigeria on the 17th as the step up their preparation for an African Championship qualifier against Gabon in September. The players are Abidje Jahai, Prince Omosofa. Chinedu, Madweke, Kisle Okiru, and Kabiru Mohamed. Incidentally, all midfielders and have since left the team's camp in Calabar. The five who are given the marching order according to the coaching crew have significantly dropped in form and have contributed little to the fortune of the team in recent times. The Golden Eaglets dispatched Congo Democratic Republic on a 5-0 aggregate early this month, but coach and Monique said there was no room for complacency. Now, Carol Pola's captain, Theophilos Aferokai, has returned for Sunday's league match uh, at Warrior Wolves after a knee injury. Uh, the experienced goalkeeper suffered the injury in a Week 21 game against Giwa FC in Canada, but he's now fit again to return to training. He said, Pillars are ready to face Warrior Wolves in the week 24 encounter and lastly after the ruling by the court of arbitration for sports cars on the sanction imposed by fifa on the uruguayan player Luis Suarez, the former liverpool striker was the center of attention today uh, at the uh, suidad deportiva john gamper as they had his first ever training session with his new teammates Suarez trained alongside Xavi Hernandez and Mark Batra, even though he hasn't received the medical all clear yet. Liz Suarez will be represented and presented to the Barcelona fans on Monday before the John Gamper Trophy match. And that's all on sports. Thanks for watching. I'm Tolu or Jeremy. Over now to Gift or Getter for the rest of the news. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, the news. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. It's Core TV primetime news. Now, stories outside Nigeria. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has condemned the spate of rapes, describing it as a source of shame for India. He urged an end to communal violence as he vowed to improve the lives of the nation's poor in his first Independence Day speech. The right-wing Hindu nationalist restated his solidarity with the wider South Asian region, but held back from mentioning India's great rival, Pakistan, which is also celebrating its independence 68 years ago. Modi said levels of rape had shamed India. He urged parents to take responsibility for the behavior of their sons rather than put the uh, blame on their daughters. Anger over sexual violence has been rising in the last two years, 
fueled by a series of high-profile assaults, including the fatal gang rape of a student on a bus in Delhi in December 2012. And there was widespread outrage in May when two teenagers were found hanging from a mango tree after being gang raped in Uttar Pradesh. European Union ministers convened in Brussels in a rare summertime meeting to seek unanimous approval for the shipment of arms to Iraqi Kurds fighting Islamic State jihadists. Uh, the unscheduled gathering came after days of forceful demand by France, whose foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, criticized EU colleagues for remaining on holiday while besieged civilians were being killed in Iraq. Defense matters are strictly the purview of member states. France and Britain have already announced they will ship to weapons to Iraqi Kurds. Struggling to push uh, and we do Islamic hope that we'll see greater Kurds. political stability now in Iraq as they face the challenges from ISIS uh, of their sweeping across parts of northern and western Iraq, never forgetting the situation in Syria, by the way. Um, but also the humanitarian challenges. That's been the show for tonight. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Gift Ogete, wishing you a very good night. Rest. Good night.